How's the ward treating you? I could treat you worse if you like. What you looking for? Remember, the choices you make out there can come back to haunt you. Believe me. What can I do for you? Take care, my friend. How goes it, friend? Take care, my friend. Better be worth my time, traveler. What did you bring me? not never seen you before in my life i just figure you're you you know and i'm me and that's 
That's where we are. So, what can old Mudtooth do for you, huh? Careful now. My answers are known to lead to more questions. Quite a bit, stranger. The name's Mudtooth. And ain't nobody been around longer or seen more than I have. Except maybe old Ford, of course. But that old mudder cheats. Anyway, he hardly tells any of his stories. Only three reasons why folks come to see me. And that's my stories or my stew. Yeah. So, youngin', what'll it be? Town, you call it. Back in my day, a place like this wouldn't be considered much more than a camp or a, 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 a bivouac. You might call it, nah, this ain't no town. Not yet. But it is a fine place to set up Kip. <laughs> I lived by myself for years, see? Had myself a, uh, what you calls it, uh, a hockapotopter. That thing could fly to the moon and back. <laughs> it could. <laughs> Anywho, I was living by myself when my boy Brabus showed up saying we should move on. Told me it wasn't safe for me to be living like I've been living no more. He told me about this place. Got some nice people here. Took some getting used to being around folks again. Well, Brabus, he's my son. For his idea to come join this little shanty town. Not a bad idea it was, neither. He's over yonder, at the shooting range, if you're looking to find him. Not much of a talker, though, that one. <laughs> Guess he didn't get his old man's gift for gab, eh? <laughs> That's so? Huh. Did I tell you about the stories yet? Right. So, let me see here. Folks, come see me for my stories and my stew and... Listen, you sure I said there were three reasons? Cause there's only two, and that's certain. Huh. Only two reasons folks come to see old Mudtooth and you know both of them. I'm pretty sure your memory's slipping. You bet your apple I can, but these ain't just stories, stranger. They're objective retellings of legitimate occurrences what you wouldn't believe. Now, where to start? I ever tell you about the Shrouded King? No, it ain't a book. It's real, I tell you. Real as every damn story I know. He's the king of another world, see? And his world was overrun by the root just like ours. Or at least it was gonna be. The Shrouded King, he got his people together to draw as much power as he could from his own ding-dang-dingity son. Used it to make himself a weapon. As soon as the root showed up, he fired the damn thing. Now the king, he knew what was about to happen, but he didn't tell nobody. That weapon weren't just gonna scorch the root. No, it scorched the whole dim darn dingity world. Burned the dead wood the hell out of there. Killed half his kingdom and twisted the other half into something unrecognizable. And that's why he wears a shroud, see? Because he done twisted himself in the process. But he don't want no one to see the mangled bits of his face parts. Sure can. Let's see. Ho ho! Back when the earth fell, a dragon, a real root dragon, took up residence over there, just like in old fairy tales. It started in them wards, see? Your eyes only hush-hush military conspiracizing farms and whatnot. That's where they made all their weapons and did them um, experiments. And just like those tales, it took a... took a what now? It took a knight to slay this dragon. 
Ho, ho, ho. But the dragon was crafty, all right. He knew the knight needed help, so the dragon gave it to him. Yep, yep, yep. The dragon took the form of a token tree and told the knight if they wanted to slay that dragon, they'd have to slay all these other beasts first. A cyclops, a living statue, uh, what do you call them? Uh, golem. Well, the knight slayed them all. But the thing was, these beasts weren't protecting the dragon. They were holding him back. So when the dragon finally did reveal itself, it was too strong for the knight. And it took him, body and mind, and made their strength its own. Let me see here. Ah, you've been introduced to that girl Clementine. Powerful woman she is, but she weren't always so. She's near as old as Ford is, if you can believe it. <laughs> Even older than my old bones, how about it? Those two have a lot in common, including traveling to other worlds. You see, she was born on Earth, but Clementine spent a hundred years on a snow world called Resome. They call it that on account of some you read and some you don't. <laughs> anyway, what was she doing all that time? Training. See, Reese Holmes full of giant talking rats. <laughs> and you got warrior rats and midwife rats and even mystic rats. Clementine, she learned under the tootly edge of a two-headed mystic name of uh, Sebum, Sebum, Sebum. Taught her everything she knows. She don't talk about it, of course, on account of Sebum, Sebum, Sebum's a wanted man. Duh, 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 rat, I guess. But it's God's own truth. I met the man myself, duh, duh, rat. You won't believe this one, but you should. Crazy Eight traveled a lot after leaving Sanctuary. Came to this one town named Ghostwell. No, Oak Hole. No, wait. It was Swan Creek. Swan Creek, I'm sure of it. Anyway, this Croakswell town didn't take kindly to strangers. And that sure as hell meant us. We stayed anyway, of course. Brought them good scrounge, we did. Nobody scavenged like the Crazy Eight. And there was this girl, smartest damn girl you ever met. Her old man, though, he didn't like us one bit, <laughs> especially me. So one day, there's a banging on our doorstep, and I, uh, I go to open it, and of course I'm awake. Now, her old man, though, he didn't like us one bit, especially me. So one day, there's a banging on our doorstep. I open the door, and the girl's old man clocks me with the butt of his shotgun. Knocked out one of my teeth, he did. Then he points the gun in my face and starts shouting. Which one of you Astley holes got her in the family way, he says. I know it was one of you. Well... I ain't gonna argue with a man behind a gun. So, I looks around, sees my tooth in the mud, <laughs> and says, My tooth! He's the one you're after! <laughs> and off he ran after someone who don't exist. Or, 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 or didn't exist, I guess. We ditched Ghost Crack that day, but the name came with me. And that's the story of how Brabus was born. Except he weren't born yet, was he? Hmm. Not born then. The other thing. Conceptualized. I'm always here to answer them. If you got them. So long as you head back then, eh? What? You go deaf out there? You're the newcomer, ain't you? Nora Camarillo. I keep folks alive around here. You know you're lucky they found you when they did? 
Your friend was pretty bad. I got her pretty much. Any part of your flesh prison breaks down, you come to me. There ain't much I haven't seen before. Let me know if you see something you need. Take care, sunshine. God damn, it is you! The rumors had me thinking I might not ever see you again. They said you ran off with that old Ford fella and disappeared. I ain't seen you since. Where have you been? You mean that big ass floating gym over there? Both said it can take you other places, other worlds even. Before we got here, I'd have laughed in his face. But I've heard weirder stories than that. And I can see on your face, it ain't all make believe, is it? Feels like anything can be true here. They even healed my root rot. I tell you what, I might just start believing in fairy tales. Even Santa Claus and Fulton's Blend. Yeah. I don't know what's in that stuff Doc Nora gave me, but I ain't felt this good for years. Hell, maybe it was Fulton's blend. <laughs> ah, you know me. I get anxious sitting still for too long. So, I went out to the ruins and scrounged anything useful I could find. I was just doing what I do to survive, you know. Maybe get some things together for when we moved on, but then you didn't come back. And Bo said folks around here could use this stuff, so. I set up shop. So hey, if you ever need anything out there in the worlds or whatever, you just let me know. I got all kinds of stuff for trade. I'll be here when you get back. You met Dale? Dan owes me a rabbit. Or better yet, a rat.
shit. What was that? I miss her. She <laughs> brought me candy. Do you hear that? Oi, oi, what are you? God's behind us. Am I asleep? Huh? But that's just what you'd say if I were in it. It's here. Yeah, I'm asleep. And it's already here. In my brain. Except... Except it, it don't need to trick me, do it? If I'm sleeping, I'd already know. Oh, the, the night, Weaver. It comes when we sleep. Eats our dreams, hollows us out. Leaves us for dead. A creature of nightmares. No, no, for it don't make the nightmares do it. It just leaves them. Swallows everything good, so only the nightmares are left. There ain't no escape, mate. Or, oh, oh, there is. But no one's found it. No one set that fella over. <laughs> Lucky sap. So there's a way. Huh? There's a way. The asylum, mate. The asylum. You ask him. And they'll say we're crazy, all of us. But no, 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 no. They're the ones who are crazy. They don't see. They don't know. <laughs> don't want to know. That's where they lock us up in here, see? <laughs> to protect themselves from what they don't know, but are afraid of knowing. But we see, all of us in here, we see the monsters, the visitants. The visitants. They come for us. Come for all the Dran, whether you see them or not. <sighs> but they don't want to know. Don't want to hear. So they throw us away where we can't... Can't infect them with knowledge. Can't make them all crazy. Like us. Nothing. Nothing! At least, not much. I only seen one once. It looked right at me. Shrieked and charged. I ran for me life. I ran until I couldn't run no more. Then I hid. And I prayed to the gods behind us. I'm lucky. Lucky. The others here, they got worse stories. They say the creatures took people away. Took them. Whether they believed in the creatures or not. But what's really scary? Really? Scary is them folks what didn't get taken, just turned and went back to life like nothing happened. No, you tell me, who's the crazy ones? Oval, yeah, Oval. He used to slip away at night when the nurses were sleeping, head up to the attic to do his, his drawings. <laughs> Oval, see, he don't convince himself if he drew a doorway just right, it'd be real. It'd take him somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere out of here. We told him he was crazy. <laughs> uh, like he didn't already know. <laughs> but he's gone now, ain't he? He done did it. Drew himself a doorway to another world and <laughs> stepped through it. So, there's a way. There's a way. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what they want you to think, see? But there ain't no way out of this building. The building's... not just the building, see? It's the system. You walk outside these walls, you're still in the building. No, no, no. Oval. 
He found his door, his path. It's the only way to escape the system. The only way to be free. Trust me. Trust me. Orville. It's, uh... A creature. Uh, comes when you sleep. Preys on your dreams, your... Your fears. You wake up hollow. Like a... Like a stone house burned out by fire. But it could kill us. You could kill us at any time, see. But don't. Because we're its feeding ground. It keeps us alive. But just a little. Just so it can feed. So we stay awake, see. We lift drugs, or cut ourselves, or draw on the walls, or anything, anything to keep from sleeping. The nurses say it's all in our heads. All in our heads! All of us! <laughs> and they say we're crazy. Come from? Don't know. Don't know. One of them. Sure. The visitants. The things what no one wants to see that they see, but I can smell it. Mm -hmm. I smell it even now, lingering in the corners and the shadows. The basement. We ain't allowed down there. But the reek is deepest in the deep, see? And I wouldn't go down there for nothing. Not nothing in the whole dark world. Ah, <sighs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, don't tell them I sent you, though. Uh, noises below. We He's have awake. a patient on the loose. No. Oh, no. I'm awake. I'm awake. No, oh, I should have done something. I should have done something. Not it at all. Now, 
No, no. No, no. with me. the only one who understood me. Have you seen Dr. Morrow? The doctor's been gone for ages. Hope she's okay. You don't have any candy, do you? I do anything. Wouldn't I do anything? We are they prisoners or guards? Okay, this is it.
What is it? I am busy. Oh. My staff put me in here. As if I were a common patient. I honestly did not think they were capable. No matter. It's a blessing, really. It gives me time to complete this damned sculpture. Yes, well... It's difficult to recreate the Nightweaver. As I sleep and she feeds upon me, I can see her features clear as day. But when I wake, they fade like mist breath in the winter air. I've sculpted several versions now. No, no single sculpture was accurate, but I suspect the gestalt of them might spark my memory. Alas, I... I've lost them all. How long ago? I could not even say. Of mine? Oh, goodness, yes! Oh, I thought I had lost these forever. What with the world shifting in those... Incompetent nurses trying to silence me. That is precisely what I'm trying to ascertain. If you would but leave me to my work. Elementary psychology, my dear. The same methods we use on our patients. The arts have a, a remarkable way of breaking through our brains. Natural blockades. I'm sorry, I really don't have time for my whole life story. I must complete the sculpture. <laughs> because I'm insane, dear. Was that unclear? No, I... I just didn't expect my pathetic staff to have the wherewithal to rise up against me. Quite surprising. That's a bit of a story. I had been seeing the Nightweaver in my sleep. And for a time, I found solace confiding in my patience. That is severely unprofessional, as you might imagine, and I felt terribly guilty about it. So, after many sleepless nights, I admitted to my head nurse what I had been seeing. The look. Patronizing pity in her eyes was infuriating. Shortly after, the nurses cornered me in my office and forced me down here. Days. I cried out for someone, anyone. But no one came. They never once checked on me. Incompetence. I was, yes. Goodness knows what those fools had done in my absence. The patients run rampant. I shouldn't wonder. We protect and care for them, of course. The patients here are unfit to live in the world, liable to harm themselves or, or others. Despite the ineptitude of the nursing staff, our patients are treated quite well. 
Or so they were. Under my watch. Not a one of my nurses has even bothered to check on me, or even bring me a meal. <sighs> yes, I know precisely of whom you speak. For so long, I had thought his rantings to be mere delusions. But once I had seen the Nightweaver for myself, well, he proved to be a needed source of solace. I'm glad to hear the nurses have not locked him away as well. It... It's difficult to explain. Perhaps that's why it feels so insane. The patients spoke of it first. Some great change, unseen monsters, and of course, this Night Weaver. I thought it a kind of mass hysteria. The fact that some outside these walls made the same claims only confirmed it for me. A, a, a kind of psychological infection. I may have. She came to me in my sleep. Just as the patients described, I could see her in my dreams. Even as those dreams slipped away, and all I was left with was darkness and horror. I woke terrified and hollow, unable to even speak for several hours. I saw it then. The changes in the world that I could not see before. Cracks in the walls and behind the shadows. I saw the way the others would become angry or apathetic toward the patient's stories, as if they saw the same but wished to convince themselves they hadn't. How complacent of you to assume I can be sure of anything anymore. I am, or was, a medical practitioner. I believe only what I can measure or see. But I have seen so much now. I'm sure of nothing. If I am not insane, then surely the entire world must be. Okay. Okay. Do you need something else? Indeed. Damn! That's not it. Oh! They come. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's it. Is it you again, stranger? No one else has ever checked on me. Whatever could it be? Oh, that's it! The final one! Oh, seeing them all together. They are so alike, yet not. Like the many aspects of the Night Weaver herself. I remember now. A little corny bearer slept and dreamed he saw a sight. Of teeth and trails and darkened veils and unforgiving light. Two shiny copper teeth removed from nine discarded cones. And seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten tone. So little corny barrow slept and dreamed he had a fright. But when he woke, he remembered not. But cold forgotten night. I suppose it doesn't make much sense. But that is what I was trying to remember. The, the feel of the night weaver more than the physicality of her. Thank you. Stranger. Just an old tune my mother used to sing to me. I don't know what it means. But they say song is how we trick our brains into remembering what we've forgotten. And it feels like the night we... Of course. Very well. Two shiny copper teeth removed from nine discarded cones and seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten tone. Two shiny copper teeth removed from nine discarded cones. What was I supposed to do, eh? Two shiny copper teeth removed from one discarded cones And seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten cone Two shiny copper teeth removed from one discarded cones And seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten cone Two shiny copper teeth removed from one discarded cone. And seven leaves from one discarded cone. Two shiny copper teeth removed from nine discarded cones. And seven yellow leaves excised from one forgotten tone.
It seems this twisted world is not yet depleted of surprises. I greet you, then, and welcome you to the realm of the Fae, or what so remains. I am Numue, artisan, seer, goddess of the Fae, and counselor to the one true king. Or so I was. Still, it is my gift to see what cannot be seen, and to forge what cannot be forged. So then, strange one, what brings you thus before me? Like you, you say? You are a unique taste, strange one. Unknown to me, but your form, perhaps. Yes, it is familiar. I may have seen this Clementine in dreams and visions. Uh, she wears your shape, yes. But she tastes different, powerful. I have seen her in a kingdom of great authority, filled with doors and possibilities. But I do not recognize it, nor can I find the way. Not here, not as things are. You are not the only soul seeking answers thus. There was another, a denizen of these kingdoms twain, and my answer for him was that which I now tell you. You have been marked as prey like a grazing beast in the eyes of a creature unlike anything else in this twined world. The once beautiful Nightweaver. Just so. The scent is as strong on you as it was on him. You cannot escape her. She may not come for you now, but she will come. When she finds you, you cannot survive. Unless... You might hunt her first. Seek her out, strange one. Carry the heart of one of her recent victims to her realm, and slay her before she begins the hunt. I can send you to her hunting grounds. It is the only aid I will grant, though it bring you more hardship than help. Be warned, said grounds are ruled only by chaos and discord. There is much to fear besides the creature herself. Be certain you are prepared. A goddess, strange one. The everlasting goddess of dreams. Beloved and beatified by all fey. <sighs> Alas. She is no longer thus. When our world was debauched, so also was she. We are all of us lost in this colloidal kingdom. Seek out her nest. It will be a place of untold woe and suffering. Indeed, he must have passed through this dwelling already to have her mark upon you thus. <laughs> 